Welcome, everyone. I'm Sue Barber, author, former IT director for a Fortune 500 company, turn executive coach, and this is the Visibility Factor Podcast, where we explore how to raise your visibility and play bigger at work and in life. We'll explore key topics and welcome guests that help you shift your thinking about yourself so you can see new possibilities for your leadership. I'm on a mission to create a visibility movement for leaders to show their value and be seen for their true talent. Are you ready to take the next step towards a higher level of visibility for yourself? Let's go. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Visibility Factor podcast. This is Sue Barber, your host. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how coaching can make a difference for leaders. One of the things that I have realized over time is that sometimes people misunderstand coaching and there's a lot of comparison at times to counseling or to mentoring or to even training and teaching sometimes. And it is a bit different. And so I wanted to share a little bit about my experience with coaching, how I got to this place and became a coach. And just some of the things that I think coaching can really do for leaders. So if it's ever been a question that you've had about what is a coach, how could I work with a coach, what are they going to do for me, uh, maybe this gives you some insights, and that's my goal for today. So let's start a little bit in the past. Um, A historical perspective on coaching, when I first heard about coaches, I remember there was a senior executive at work and someone made an offhand comment that they weren't performing really well and that a coach had been hired for them. And it was almost like this unwritten thing that because a coach had been hired for them and they weren't doing really well, that they were going to get let go. At that time, I definitely associated, oh, you only get a coach when you're not performing. And that became a very big thing in most companies. Someone was about to be exited from an organization, a coach would be hired to try to save them. And if they could turn them around, great. But if they couldn't, that person would get let go. And I was asked a few times once I became a coach to do something like that. And I really had to ask them some hard questions because I I just don't think that's fair to the person, right? At that point, that manager may have already made a decision and me going in there and talking to them may make a difference for them. But is that manager still think that they need to be let go regardless? So I always ask the hard questions like, have you already made a decision on this? Because if you have, then there's no need for us to even go through coaching at this point. You know, this person may turn around, but if you can't see them differently or aren't even open to seeing them differently, then, you know, we shouldn't waste our time and I don't want to take your money to do that. But I'm hoping right now you're starting to hear more good things about coaching. I definitely am. And coaching has evolved over time. It is a very big thing. And and what's I love about it is that a lot of people in the Gen Z generation and millennials are really seeking out coaches now because they've seen the positive things that can happen when you have a coach. And what I love about that is they're trying to do something proactively for their career because they know that it can help them move faster. And so the more people start to hire coaches, share goodwill about their experience about coaching, share their positive experiences, it starts to change the perception about coaching. And it's one of the things that I work really hard to always make sure that I am talking about the great things that coaching can do for you. If you look at any of my social media and I share anything about clients or what they're doing, I want people to know that it can really make a difference. Now, sometimes it's hard for people to understand that if they've never been through that before, if they've never had the experience. But when you look at a challenge that you might have with a manager or a peer and you don't know how to work through it, that's an opportunity for a coach. If you're looking at a possible job transition or moving to a new company or starting to lead a new team, that's an opportunity for a coach. Any of those things that helps you move through those transitions much more quickly and move to a better place as a leader and build your confidence, it's going to accelerate your career. And there are many things that I talk about with clients that may have to do with their career, but I view people as one person, right? So you have a life and you have a career and those things are intertwined. And so if you're doing something potentially in your career and at work, you're probably doing it in your personal life. And so I may ask some questions to them like, do you see this showing up anywhere else in your life? Because if we can help them move past that challenge in their career, they're most likely going to be able to move past it in their personal life as well, which is a good thing. 
So it's taken some time to change the perception of coaching and help people understand the benefits that it can bring to an organization or a leader or a team. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my experience with coaching and share a great article that I found about coaching. So I'll go through that towards the end of this conversation. But one thing I just want to have a small disclaimer here. This is going to be a high level view of coaching for you. There are so many types of coaches out there. I had no idea there was that many when I started to get into coaching. There are many focus areas that coaches have. So you could have one leadership coach focused on visibility like I am or on accountability or on just executives or just C-suite people or just people at the you know emerging talent at the lower levels. So each coach kind of takes you know, what they know, what they've been through, their own experiences, and really tries to focus and give back in that space. And that's definitely what I've done. And I've seen so many others do that as well. So there's so many different ways that I could talk about coaching for you, but that might be the topic of future episodes. I don't know. Uh, But my hope is at the end of this podcast, you're going to start to think about whether a coach might be a good idea for you or someone you know. So when I first hired my first coach, it was in 2012. Uh, I had some big challenges that I wasn't sure how to navigate without some help. The company was going through a split of the company as it was and turning into two companies. And there were a lot of things going on. It was very stressful, a lot of uncertainty. And I needed to find some outside perspective to help me see what my blind spots were and to help me look at the situation differently. I spent six months with my coach and it was the most pivotal thing I could have done to my growth as a leader, to my confidence. She really helped me believe in myself again. And I was struggling with that so much because I had, I will say, criticized to some extent. I just felt like people weren't really believing in what I was doing. And that's a hard place to be. If any of you have ever experienced that, I'm sure you know the feeling. It just feels like you can't do anything right no matter what you do. And no matter how hard you work, it's not going to get any better. So I really credit her in so many ways, but most of all, because I think she helped open my eyes to the idea that coaching could be a career for me. I had no idea (laughs) that was even possible in that moment. And she literally changed my life and transformed me in so many ways through that six month period. So, you know, sometimes I think people, you know, will look at a time frame and say, well, you couldn't possibly change in a short time frame. You absolutely can. I mean, I can have a 15 minute conversation with someone. I did it yesterday and she called me about a job that she was looking to interview for. And in less than 20 minutes, we went through a bunch of different questions for her to think about. And at the end of it, she said, I almost didn't call you. I almost didn't call you because I didn't know if I needed the help. And I am so unbelievably glad that I did. Because now I'm going to go into this interview in a whole different way. I'm going in confident. I'm thinking about myself differently. I'm thinking about the way I'm going to talk about things differently. So that's what coaching can do for you. It can literally change the way you think about yourself and how you show up to others in a very short time period. Now, if we're talking about big transformation, yes, that's going to take some time and that's going to take longer, but we are not going to be able to solve every little thing the first few sessions. And so, for example, imposter syndrome or, you know, showing up in a visible way like I had to work through, it took me longer than my six months with that coach to do that. There was a long journey behind that. But that first six months set me up for success in a way that I couldn't have even, you know, thought about at that moment. So when I hired my coach, I had been looking for a little while, but I hadn't met one that I really connected with until she came to the company. And she came in to do a speaking engagement for our group, like a lunch and learn kind of an event. She had a great perspective on leadership. She shared stories of clients who'd found their confidence again after it had been lost. And I could have just taken her advice that day and gone through the exercise that she put us through and and walked away and been fine. But I knew I needed more than that. And so I reached out to her to see if we could work together. Now, I remember in that moment being excited and anxious all at the same time. Um, It isn't easy to share what your challenges are with someone. It's very vulnerable. And I think there might be a fear of judgment or shaming because I'd never worked with a coach before. And I was worried that she might not think I'm a good client, right? There's all of these stories we tell ourselves. I don't know what I thought a good client looked like, but I wasn't sure I was going to fit the bill. And so I want people to understand that didn't happen at all. She was a completely safe space to share how I felt, what I was thinking. She didn't judge me. She didn't shame me. She just asked me some really good questions to help me think about how others might perceive me, how I might be perceiving situations incorrectly, and how can I look at it differently? 
Now, I knew she was in my corner from the get-go. I just knew that she believed in me and she trusted that I was doing the right things for me. And she would just push on me to challenge me to think differently on some things that maybe I was, you know, not thinking about in the best way for myself or I was putting myself down. But I learned so much about myself during that six months with her and it changed everything. So becoming a coach myself, my experience with that coach helped me see that I could choose this path of being a coach. Now, from the moment I spent time working with her to when I started becoming a coach and going to school for it, there's probably a two-year time frame in there because I, I wanted to really sit with the idea of it. What did that look like? How could I do it? So it took me a few years to be ready. But I started taking classes at night in an online program with people from all over the world. It was an amazing experience. I met teachers who were master coaches who helped us learn the art of coaching, how to listen deeply, and to really just be present and be there for our clients. Now, all of those things I learned were exactly what I felt like when I worked with her. So it made sense why I felt safe. It made sense why it came across as very authentic and genuine because she had learned these things that I was now learning. She was an excellent role model for me. And as I began working with my own clients, I started being able to do the same thing for them. So one of the things that was most interesting is our teachers in that program said, you should prepare your family and friends for the transformation that you're about to go through. Now, I didn't know what that meant yet, but I just took her word for it. (laughs) And I remember telling my husband, like, they're telling me that we're going to change a lot. We're going to be very different after we go through this program. And so... I'm just telling you that that's going to happen. I don't know what that means yet, but be prepared. So I think it was really a good thing to do because I did change a lot. I didn't even know how much I was going to change. And I knew so much about working in corporate, my industry, all the different leadership roles that I had. I knew how to do all that. In this new world as a coach, I needed to learn how to start a business. So I had left corporate by this point. I was starting my own business and I didn't know how to do all that. So there was a lot of um, imposter syndrome happening in my head about being a new coach, moving into something brand new, and starting a business, which I had never done. But I found people that could help me learn. They gave me advice. They mentored me. I hired a new coach to help accelerate my learning to help me be an even better coach. And I just moved my business forward. The transformations that I went through at that time have just continued as I've learned more. I'm a huge learner. I love to read. I love to talk to people and learn from them too. And all of those learnings helped me progress to where I am now. It helped me publish the book and start the podcast that you're listening to. Throughout all of these things, I've had a coach to support me along the way. It's easy to get in your head and have doubts. And so that's why having a coach there to help you move past that doubt is so important. So I want to share with you this article that uh, came from an executive coach and an author. Her name is Lolly Daskal, and she posts a lot on Twitter. So if you follow her on Twitter, you'll see a lot of quotes and articles that she shares. She's been someone I followed for a really long time. And this uh, article that she published is, How Can an Executive Coach Make You a Great Leader? So she shares five different ways that executive coaching can help leaders be successful. The first thing she mentions is they help a leader understand their own strengths and weaknesses. So I believe that to be wholeheartedly true. I think it's really hard sometimes for us to see these things for ourselves. We have blind spots and we don't know that. Or someone has given us feedback and instead of believing what we know to be about ourselves, we believe that feedback instead. And maybe it's not the right feedback. Maybe it's not even true. But the intent is that a coach can help you understand your leadership style and approach help you understand the abilities that you have and the capabilities that you have. And what I usually try to start people off with is an assessment because it helps them get to learn themselves better. It helps me get to learn them better as their coach. And it really highlights for them some of the things that they can't see for themselves. And especially if they're new, like a new client for me, I don't know them well enough to be able to see all that. So I leverage Hogan assessments. I know every coach has their own list of assessments that they are certified in. And I have, you know, a few others that I'm certified in as well. But to me, a Hogan is really great because it starts to talk about and and show you who you are, how you think about yourself and what you prefer and value. But it also helps you see what other people might think about you, what the perception of you might be. And those are the greatest conversations because We're not saying it's true that that's what they see, but it's worth exploring. Is it possible that they could see you that way? That's what we're trying to get at and understand. 
They also provide great guidance and support. So a coach can provide ways to navigate challenging situations and decisions. They'll ask you questions to help you think about ways that you could approach things differently than you have. They may provide insights. If they ask you for permission and you're willing to listen to ideas that they have, they can share their own experiences or other ideas that they might have that could help you face that situation in a different way or develop strategies and solutions to address them. Now, one of the things that, you know, I thought about when I read this statement about providing guidance and support is that sometimes, just like my coach did for me, they also share that they have belief in you. And that's what I try to do for other people is that I want them to see that I believe in them. I believe that they can do this. I believe that they have the talent and the capabilities to do this. And sometimes when you don't have a ton of confidence or your confidence has been broken for yourself because of what someone else may have said to you or a situation you went through, it can do a real number on you. And you need somebody to be in your corner who believes in you again. And that's what a coach can do. And that's what she did for me. And that's what I try to do for others. Coaches can also help leaders develop a growth mindset. Uh, I think it's really important for people who want to change and transform to really make sure that they have a growth mindset, that you can grow and develop new skills and capabilities. It's going to help you enable yourself to change with different challenges you may encounter. It's going to help you improve and adapt as a leader. I want you to think about this for yourself. If I asked you the question, can you be more than you are today? What would you answer? Someone who's got a growth mindset would answer, yes, I can be more than I am today. I can do more. I can try new things. Someone with a fixed mindset might say, no, I can't do any better. I can't go anywhere. This is as good as it gets for me. Now, can you move and shift from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset? Yes. Does it take some work to do that? Absolutely. So if that's something you want to work on with a coach, then let them know that that's something you want to focus on. If you aren't open to change and if you aren't open to coaching and feedback, then it's going to be hard for you to be able to transform maybe in the way that you want to. Now, I focus on possibilities with all of my clients. I want them to know that I see great things for them. I want them to be motivated and see new ideas that they could execute and the impact that they could make that's bigger than what they're doing today. Coaches also challenge you to think outside the box. Now, an executive coach can challenge you to think outside of the box and think about new and innovative approaches to leadership, maybe help you solve a problem differently. They may help you adapt your leadership style in a bigger and more creative way. They may help you look at market conditions and customer needs because most coaches um, are coming to you from different experiences, maybe in corporate Uh, They may have come from an HR background or like me, where they came from more of a business background. So if you if you have those capabilities as a coach, you have a lot of ideas that you could maybe share if they're willing to hear you. So I always ask questions around uh, alternative ideas and approaches. One of my favorite ways to do this is what I call my visibility breakthrough 90 day program. And in that program, we go deep on whatever those challenges are. We spend some time really breaking down what's going on, where the person's mindset is, how can I help them move past that mindset and move forward. We get to go deeper on these challenges and brainstorm new ideas that they can try. We put together a plan of action for them. We have coaching sessions on either side of these deep dive conversations because I want to make sure that they are continuing to to make progress. 90 days isn't very long, but remember I told you, you can make big changes in a very short time frame. I want them to walk away inspired to take action. Now, I have as much fun in these sessions as they do because it just allows you to be creative. And most of the time, I come into these sessions just very open. I have ideas of what we may do, activities we may do, conversations we may have, but I really let the client drive it because they're the ones who have to do the work here. They're the ones who have to see that they can do something different. So it's a really fun opportunity to take people through this experience and see what they come out like on the other side. Some people have come in very sad and upset and crying and just don't know what to do. And they walk away excited and motivated and ready to take action. And that's the best thing that they can do for themselves, right? To move past that place of being stuck to now being able to take in some action, even if it's imperfect. And the last one she talks about is providing leaders with accountability and support. So a lot of coaches focus on, you know, you said you were going to do this. Did you do this? Why didn't you do this? What held you back? Um, We're trying to help make sure that you attain your goals. 
And if there's obstacles that you face or challenges, how can we help you work through those? Because um, I've had some people that I've coached who run into an obstacle and they just get stuck and they can't go forward. And so I want them to think creatively about how do they maneuver around that obstacle? What other things could they try? What else is one thing that they could do to just take action? And if they can do that, they can start to move forward, right? It no longer is an obstacle for them. The other thing that I thought about with this one is that a coach needs to be the one to tell you the truth. The things that I have to tell people sometimes are not easy to hear, but it's necessary for a leader to grow. And I may be the only one who actually will tell them what they need to hear. They may not hear from their family or friends or their direct reports or their peers. And so if I'm not telling them, then they're not going to know, right? It could be a blind spot for them. And what if what I tell them is the one thing that could change them and help them the most? That's part of what my role is. So at the end of the day, working with an executive coach can help leaders grow beyond their own expectations, see new possibilities for their leadership, and gain confidence. It helps them accomplish way more than they ever imagined. It definitely did for me. They can help you slow down and see things in a new way. They're present, amazing listeners, and some of the most supportive people that I've ever met. I am so incredibly grateful that I get to be part of this profession and fulfill my purpose to help leaders see what they can be and watch them go do it. Now, today's visibility action is a couple of questions that I want you to ask for yourself and just to think about this. The first question, how can a coach benefit you based on what you learned in this podcast? So I shared some ideas of some challenges that you may face, some ideas of what I faced and where my challenges were. What are some things that you might be struggling with that you heard something today that might help you think about a coach for yourself? What are three areas of growth that you could take to get you to the next level or to help you be more visible and stand out more that you could start doing, but maybe you're not sure how to do it? A coach could help you with that as well. So think about the things that might help you the most. Maybe it's feedback you got from a performance review or someone that's mentoring you gave you feedback. Think about those things that could help you and could a coach help you get there? So if you decide that a coach is a good idea for you, you can meet with them, see if they're a good fit for you. I I like to say that this is a very important trusted relationship. So do you have good chemistry with them? If you go into the conversation and you just feel like it's not fitting, and I definitely had some of those conversations when I was looking for a coach, I just didn't feel like it felt right to me. Um, Trust your gut on this. Uh, Can you see that you can trust them? Because you're going to be sharing some really vulnerable things. And if you don't feel like you can trust them or that they're genuine, there are plenty of coaches out there that are amazing. So don't be afraid to talk to other ones. Did they come recommended to you and the other person who shared them with you had an experience of growth? The best people that come to me are people who come to me because of referrals. So other clients that I've helped have shared my name and talked to them about what it is we've done together and how they've grown. And those people come in already knowing a little bit more about me, knowing what it is we did together with that other person. And they can see possibilities now because they know that it's possible just based on those other conversations that they've had. Those are the best. Those are the best conversations that I have with people because I know that they already know that we can do great work together. So I hope this has given you some ideas, uh, first of all, to learn a little bit more about coaching, how to think about coaching and where a coach can actually be really helpful to you as a leader. I'm really hoping that it's changed your perception, if nothing else, uh, about the coaching profession and the importance of it and how it can really make a big difference for you as a leader. Thanks so much for joining today on the Visibility Factor podcast, and we'll talk to you on the next one. Thanks so much for listening to the Visibility Factor podcast. Remember that visibility starts with small steps that are intentional and consistent each day. Be bold, be visible, be the leader you were meant to be. Find us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and wherever else you listen to podcasts. Follow us on all of our social media platforms, which are highlighted in the show notes. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time on the Visibility Factor podcast.